This video is brought to you by Greater Commons. Greater learning, greater opportunities, greater life. Visit us at greatercommons.com. All right, so I want to talk about concurrency versus parallelism, and I also want to talk about control flow, and, uh, and then I want to talk about what it means to uh, run things sequentially. So what is sequentially? Because I got this great comment from Jean-Marc Assan. I'm not sure if I'm saying your, your name right, Arsan. And uh, the comment was right here. So I'll let you take a gander at that comment. And I always love discussion and, uh, and comments and hearing what people have to think because that makes me have to go think. <laughs> and so great comment from Jean-Marc. And he forwarded a fantastic code sample. And so I just wanted to take a moment and show concurrency versus parallelism. So for those of you who are just kind of jumping into this, what is the difference between concurrency and parallelism? So concurrency is a design pattern. It's a design pattern. And you create code which has the potential to run in parallel. So you create some code, use the concurrency design pattern, and then if you run that code on a machine with a single CPU, that code is not running in parallel. Even though you've used a concurrency, a concurrent design pattern, right? If you only have one CPU, your different routines can't run on different CPUs. You only have one CPU, so your code's not running in parallel. If you have multiple CPUs on a machine uh, and you've used a concurrent design pattern, now your code has the potential to run in parallel. If it runs taking advantage of multiple cores, if it runs on multiple cores at the same time, that code is running in parallel, running in parallel, okay? Running in parallel. So that's concurrency versus parallelism. So let's take a look at uh, the code here. And if you wanna see, this is the code from the course, and here's the URL for it right there. So you can check that out. And it's a P2E8 underscore 4M4 P2. That's pretty understandable. So that's the first code sample. And let's take a look to see what it does. And then we'll see, is it running concurrently? Is it running in parallel? And we'll talk about that. I have that same code right here, 01. And I like coming over here because I could highlight stuff and it highlights for me. So we have a generator. And the generator is going to return a channel of ints, which you could receive from that channel of ints. It's going to be like, here's some values, and you're going to take the values off the channel of int. And so we're going to make that channel of ints, and that's going to be out. And then out gets returned right down here. And in between, we have this uh, this 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 go routine we're launching a go routine so that's gonna we are implementing a concurrent design pattern here because we now have broken from straight sequential control flow what is control flow so control flow right here control flow is the normal flow of a program and you could go to wikipedia and read the control flow thing but it's the normal flow of a program what is the normal flow in a go program so go starts in package main it then enters funk main and everything runs in sequence through front funk main top to bottom, top to bottom. And if it calls something, okay, let's go in sequence and do that. And so that's running in sequence, top to bottom. And control flow obviously includes not only sequence, but also conditionals like, you know, switches and if, so, it, you know, based upon some condition, do something. And also loops or iterations, right? So that's normal control flow. And, uh, and here we are still doing sequential, we're still doing sequential. We launch this, we have a concurrent design pattern that is now off running on its own. So when you're trying to understand how do concurrent programs work, uh, you're, you come here, this gets launched, it doesn't matter what's, what's happening in there, right? My sequence, my control flow just keeps going and now that's off running in its own routine over here somewhere else, all right? And so that's, that's sequence from a control flow perspective. So we have this go funk and that's running and this is just gonna loop uh, zero to 10 and or zero to nine and then it's going to each, for each one of those loops, take the number three and put it on here and just keep doing that. And I, I talked about this program not too long ago. And so it takes a value and puts it on out. So the way, the way channels work, if you have an unbuffered channel, uh, when you put a value on the channel, the code blocks. This code is blocking until there's something that takes that value off the channel. It's like, you know, people who are running a baton race. 
you know, the person carrying the baton uh, has to pass it to the person who's going to receive it. And same, same thing here. So this code is blocked until there's somebody who, or something that takes the value off of there. So we enter and there's three, and three is waiting to be put on the, three is put on here and it's waiting to be take off, taken off and that code blocks. So we start with Jen and we create a chain of events out and then this launches and then we return out and this goes here. And now we have a concurrent design pattern. We have two things occurring. This is waiting, three is on there, three is on that channel waiting to be pulled off. And this sequence has gone down here, it's returned out, and out has been assigned to in, and in has been passed to factorial, which receives a value of that type and assigns it to in. And, uh, and then here we make another channel out, which again is going to be returned there. And then this comes down and it ranges over in, in, it passes in in here, calculates the factorial, returns that int, puts it on here. So right here when we took the value, well, right here when we took the value off of the channel, right, this code went to four and put another value on that channel ready to be taken off. And now this one is ready to take that next four, take that four off, right? And so now we're passing value, values over a channel between these two, I wonder if I can do this, between those two, didn't highlight so well, but between those two go routines. And uh, the factorial is being calculated on each of them. And so those are off and running and uh, they could be on multiple. We could have three CPUs being taken advantage of here. One for the main go routine, right? Which is just the main program thread. And then an and it's a go routine's a lightweight thread. Another for this go routine right here and another for this go routine. So we have a concurrent design pattern because we're using go routines and we have the potential to be running in parallel. We could be taking advantage of three, uh, three different CPUs. So uh, that's, that's pretty cool. So we get that number and we bring it out, calculate the factorial, do the return. And then that comes up here and uh, factorial n returns a chan of n's which we reassign to f. We range over that pulling off all the values and then printing them out, printing them out. <laughs> so here's Jean-Marc's code. I'm just trying to explain in the clearest way possible. So we have a wait group, and a wait group is a way that you could synchronize your code, right? And so sync wait group. And you add values to the wait group, and then you also, notice we're passing the W in there, you also, and then that W gets assigned to W main, you also take values off of the wait group. So that's done, taking a value off of the wait group. And, uh, and so we add 100, and then we're going to do something 100 times. We're going to do this loop 100 times, and, uh, and we'll take values off of that weight group. And this waits until all the values have been taken off the weight group. So it's holding our program from exiting, because as soon as we exit main, the program's done. And so we're waiting until everything's done, processing, and then we'll exit our program. So that's what this weight group stuff is, and that's like three of the four lines right here is just dealing with the weight group, adding values and waiting. And then we pass in the weight group right here, gets assigned to W main. We also pass in the number of factorials, gets assigned to N. Now I really like the way Jean-Marc did this. Number of factorials is a constant, we can't change it, it's constant. So he assigns that constant to N, which we can now change. We could, uh, we could add, well where is N, does N get changed? N doesn't get changed. So we could actually just use the, the, the constant if we wanted. I was just, I was thinking that maybe N got changed, but it doesn't. So if we wanted to, we could actually just do this. We could take that out. And I'll let you decide what you think is more readable. And we could take this out. And anywhere that there's N, we could just put that in. Right, because we're not changing that N value anywhere. So that would work too. So here we're just passing in the weight group, which we assigned to W main. Now, why is he passing in the address? Because if he didn't pass in the address, that would get assigned to a new variable, and this would be the scope of the variable. As we change that variable, it would not change this one. But when we pass in the address, right, we're passing in the pointer, and uh, we get the address, and then down here we dereference the address, and we say, give me the value at that address, right? Give me the value right there at that address. And, uh, and then make that value done, which takes one of the values off of the weight group. And so that's, that's allowing us in this area down here to, 
be, you know, continuing to uh, take a value off of our weight group until they're all gone. And when they're all gone, that will stop waiting. So we pass that in. Then we create a new weight group. And this weight group uh, is a different scope than this W up here. So don't get confused by that. And he's going to randomly, he's going to seed a random number generator. And, uh, and then we're going to add to 100 one more to this new weight group. Now, the reason we're adding 100, uh, we're adding one more to the weight group is that right here, we're calling done for that 100 times, right? It's going to loop 100 times, and each time it's going to take a value off. And then we're also uh, calling done right down here, okay? So that that is, uh, and where is this weight group waiting? Everything is waiting right there. So this is like a big initialization, and that's why he's like all done with initialization right there. And so what is being initialized? We're looping 100 times right? One to, a, to 100, less than or equal to 100, loop 100 times there. And uh, each time we launch a Go routine and we choose a random number between 0 and 20, because that was our RD limit, and we set that to F, and then everything waits, right? So boom, 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 100 times. And on this wait group right here, we've now popped off 100, and there's one more to pop off, and it gets popped off right here, and now the waiting is done, and these guys all start executing, right? Boom, they all start executing at the same time because they were all waiting until this wait group is done. And now it's all done, everything's initialized. It's like the gates went up on the horse race and let the code fly. And so if you have multiple CPUs, they're all executing on multiple CPUs if uh, your you know runtime's determined that that's what needs to happen. All right, so then we uh, total colon equals one. And, uh, and we just take total and multiply it by, and we just multi come, come down and down and down in value, right? We're just decrementing here over and over and over. So, you know, factorial of four would be four, four times three times two times one, and then done. And then we take that value total, and we print it, print line that value, and uh, print line F, format print line F, the, the, the number that was the factorial, and then the total. So that's what we're doing there. And, uh, and then we call done on this one. We call done on this one. And so now this one is being decremented. So they're all being printed, and it's all waiting until they've all printed. And then when they've all printed, the entire program exits. So kind of a cool example. I like it. And if you wanted to, you could take that total and push it to a channel if you wanted to push it to a channel. So that'd be another way you could do it. But there's some nice simplicity in this example, and I just wanted to share it <laughs> and have that discussion about concurrency versus parallelism and then provide you just, you know, a little code walkthrough on these two different programs. All right. I hope that was helpful.